Hello! So we're gonna try something new. Uh, we've never done this on the channel. I've never actually really recorded myself uh, where you can see my face and I'll be drawing at the same time. So this is a huge experiment. If this doesn't work out, it will never happen again. But hopefully it'll work out or at least it'll be good enough. So the important thing for all of you is going to be to let me know if it's good and if you wanna see more of it. What we're gonna do today is I'm gonna look up an old piece of mine and I'm going to critique it and maybe do some sort of draw over. To be totally honest, I had this idea and I don't really have a plan. So let's start. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go through my DeviantArt account because it's the one that has the oldest record and we're gonna just try to find some stuff that we can basically rip apart. Um, by the way, I'm wearing my usual headphones so that I can try to record this well. So if you see that, that's what that is. Um, and uh, let's start perusing. Now you'll see there's a bunch of uh, tabs here open at the top because of other things that I found. Uh, and let's, this is really far back now. So let's go with, uh, let's go with this guy right here. Yeah, let's go with this one. Okay, this is the one we're gonna go with. It's a, uh, it's a, it's it's a mess. But uh, let's see what we can do. Uh, this was posted in two thousand and five, and it's only oh, it's only nine hundred pixels tall, which is exactly what I still post things at now. So, anyways, let's uh, go ahead and save this and jump into Procreate and uh, I guess take a look at it. Let's try to let's try to see what we can figure out exactly what's wrong with it. So you're gonna see a lot of the top of my head for a second here. I'll keep looking up to try and maintain some sort of eye contact, but let's start taking a look at this. Uh, first of all, obviously I'm trying to, well, I, I shouldn't say obviously. I feel like what I'm going for here is some sort of like an anime uh, school kid who goes to like, I don't know, like Garden or something like in Final Fantasy VIII. At least that's the vibe that I'm getting off of this. He's got some sort of a bag. It looks like a gym bag or something. And then he's also got uh, just a lot of adornments. So the adornments are uh, a bit much. Uh, let's start actually though, addressing some of the design here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's actually get something bright that will show up and I'll lower his opacity just a little so that we can draw directly on top here. Um, I think that for the most part, actually the design, the design as a general idea, I think works, but there's so much involved in the actual execution of this, as well as some of the design details. For one, uh, this background is atrocious. Uh, <laughs> it's just really bad. I've got this like, I mean, it's desaturated right now because it's, or I should say it's lower than opacity right now, but we've got this, we've got this weird thing, this uh, weird color, this weird, uh, just like really saturated maroon. We've got this hashy, this like sort of hatching kind of uh, gold that's just clearly the raw Photoshop circle brush. Uh, it looks like there's, yeah, I don't even have the spacing turned down. So you can see, for instance, right here, you can see where, oh wait, geez, that's pretty big. You can see where it's like circle, 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 because the spacing is too uh, low, or excuse me, too high, <clears throat> I guess, uh, is the way you'd say that. And yeah. So that's, that's step number one. We've also got clearly a duplicated uh, line layer, or at the very least, the whole thing has been duplicated and blurred black, which is how we get this, this fuzziness around the entire thing, which could be a look that you wanna go for, depending on what you're trying to do, but here it actually is taking away from the lines, and it's making the lines feel kind of like fuzzy and muddy and weak. Now, given when I did this, this was not drawn digitally. I did not draw digitally until much, much later. This was drawn on paper with a pencil and then inked with probably like a uniball or something like that. And then um, lightly erased, scanned, and then put in. Uh, so this is all drawn with ink. And you can see that I, I mean, this is a low res image, but you can just sort of see by the thickness right there of like some of these lines that it was 
not the finest detail pen, and on top of that, I was being just a little heavy-handed with it. I mean, lines like this one right here are very, very heavy. So from an execution perspective, we know that this thing just isn't good. Um, the last thing I wanna highlight with the sort of technique that I'm using here, let's return this back to full opacity. Oof, it's dark. It is a dark image. Um, is the other thing I wanna kinda highlight here is this. You can see the shadow layer is the same color as the background. Now it's not transparent, but what I did back then was I would use whatever the sort of general background color was as my base layer. Uh, this is not using layers at, like on top as shadow like what I do today. Uh, it's not the only method that I use today though, that's the thing, I also will color pick and build up the layers. So for instance, that would be the equivalent of, um, let's just grab, actually not turpentine, I don't wanna do that. Let's grab, let's go to like painting and grab just something like, whew. okay, let's just grab like a round brush, fuck it. Okay, so it would be like, for instance, for like this guy's skin tone, although I would go brighter these days than I did here to start, you know, you go like that for your sort of like base flat, create a new layer, go up, pick a new color, start doing that. I mean, this is all on my channel. You can, you can see this technique because I do still do this. Uh, and then use like a soft brush to kind of like soften that. This is like a method that I would use today, let's say. Uh, and then that would just keep going up until you're, you know, where you want to be as far as your values are concerned. Um, that's what I'm doing here, but I'm doing it horribly. I think that's the thing that I want to kind of outline here. Uh, the last, the, the thing I was just referencing is what I would then also do is there would be like a darker value that would be like this. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, it'd be like that. Like that would be the progression, uh, which is uh, fine, it's a look, uh, but it, uh, I think that that's one of the aspects that's bringing this down and making it feel so dark overall. Uh, when I made it full opaque again, it was like, oh Jesus, this thing is dark. Uh, let's talk about my application. You can tell here that I'm basically uh, not doing a great job of using the same type of brush that I have right here. And what I'm doing is I'm just going like, Actually, I probably, if I remember the techniques I used back then, I used a re reduced opacity, I would do this. This is the kind of thing I would do, which is why we're getting all of these little brushy bits in there. There are examples of me using this technique and it's, it's far worse than it is uh, in what I just showed. Um, I remember there's like a, a monkey kind of like beast uh, fighter guy from a long time ago that was like, I mean, it was like this. It was so bad across the entire thing. In fact, I may, have, I may have even gone then back the other way. And I was like, yeah, this is a look. This is digital art. Uh, it's not digital art. It's just, I mean, it is, but it's, it's not exactly operating at too high of a level. And then I think on top of that, I may have just then like selected like a darker value and done like shadows that way or something like that. But um, the point is, that's kind of what we've got going on here. This is uh, me not knowing how to blend things together, not knowing how to color pick that great, uh, not knowing brush settings, how to make that better. Actually, and to be totally honest, it's me not knowing what good looks like in a big way too. Uh, a big thing of getting better at art and knowing whether or not you can do professional art um, is knowing what's out there where you stand and kind of like where you should be in the mix uh, of all of that. It's quite, um, the, it's actually, the, it's the hardest thing I think. I think that all the technique and stuff, you can learn that over time, you can work with people, you can look up tutorials, you can do all that kind of stuff. But that part where you're actually saying like, how good am I, how good is everyone else? Uh, am I as good as them? Am I good enough to be around these other artists? And, and by be around, obviously you're good enough to be around. I mean good enough to like compete and get work and all of those types of things. Uh, that's the hardest part to try and figure out. Now let's uh, talk a little bit about the design of the character himself. 
and then we'll kind of wrap it up for this first one. This will be like a good test so that we can see if uh, this is uh, good or not. So his, his head is kind of big, like for my taste at least. Um, I don't really know how tall this character would be. Let's uh, quickly test that. Let's see, how would he be? Let's say that his legs go down like this. Okay, there's his legs. Oof, <laughs> that's, that's bad enough. I shouldn't, be, I shouldn't be critiquing myself. I should be uh, just shutting up, it looks like. Okay, let's say it's something like that. Let's just, let's just ballpark it. Okay, and then uh, we've got, uh, oof, his head is big. Let's go from chin to top of head and just do a perfect circle. Okay, let's duplicate it and pull it down. Watch, he's gonna be like exactly the right head height. He just feels, and by the way, I wouldn't say, you don't have to do this type of a head check like every time you ever do a character. You will if you have to do uh, like model sheets or something like that. This is just more of a fun way to check like what's the status of my character. Okay, so he's like six heads tall. Um, so maybe I just made him really weirdly proportioned, but I just, I just feel like that head is too big. But anyways, let's talk more about the design and actually uh, what some of the issues are with the illustration and the design. I think the design is quite busy. I don't think it's too busy for one of those sort of like more ornate, um, it's, as I said, it feels like it's very much inspired by some Final Fantasy type stuff, uh, later era Final Fantasy where there's a lot more intricate details. Uh, when I look at this, I do kind of think it's a little strange to have like these leather straps that have like all this damage to them. So what we've got on his design is we've got like regular leather that's been damaged in some way, which we have all over. Then we have these kind of like shiny, more like black leather, um, like, a, like a patent leather type thing. They're technically brown because you can see brown in the shine, but they, they seem um, just shinier, more high end. Uh, I do like the sort of motif of the really dark gray with the yellow. So I'm not against his color design. I think like these little yellow accents, although I would brighten them up a bit. Um, and then this gray is nice. Uh, I like the asymmetry that I've got going on here with the arms. Uh, it's a little, it's a little like edge lordy to have like this be just like loose, like yeah, fuck it. My sleeve's loose. Oh, but this one's rolled up because I need this sweet armband. There's a little bit of that going on here, but um, I at least like that there is that asymmetry. What I might do now, although maybe I was trying to trying to communicate that he's like just got dressed and he forgot to button. I don't know. I don't want to get in too much into my my own head from back then. But what I would probably do here is I would, if I were just going to improve this design a little bit, is I would just make that a closed sleeve so that we can just get away from that like loose sleeve thing. Uh, this rolled up sleeve is okay. You could also roll up both of them and just not put the armband on the other side. I think that that could be good. Um, I like the the whole vibe of having the, uh, the vest and the shirt. Uh, I think that's good. I think the pants are good. I think having all these straps is pretty good. Obviously he's got, he's got like a bit of like a lazy on the left side kind of thing, right? Cause he's lazy here and he's lazy here. Uh, I think that, I mean, if I'm really trying to communicate that this character is a little sloppy, uh, I would maybe do a little more of that to try and accent it. I don't think that I'm trying to communicate that the character is like massively sloppy. So maybe that's why I've just got like a couple of little things here or there, but I would argue that I would argue that this either needs to be more pronounced or we just kill this and this. And then leave this open, but like see how like kind of like wrinkly this, uh, the collar is? I would probably make that a little crisper overall and just kind of crispen him up a little bit. Um, there's not a lot being communicated here. I think that this guy is like a, a sloppy guy. So I would, I would clean those up. This bead thing uh, is interesting. I think that it matches palette wise. Uh, it's a, it feels slightly out of place, but you can actually do something like that with a character design if it's like a specific one thing, because it's like what you're trying to do is uh, show some personalization, especially in something like this that looks more like a uniform. It's kind of cool to have him 
be modifying it slightly. That's what the armband is for. That's what this bead thing is for, um, which is kind of funny when you look at that, that I've kind of consolidated certain qualities here. We've got like all of his customization is happening there. Uh, maybe, maybe this as well. Maybe that those straps are as well. Um, and then we've got like this and this, his like left side is like lazy. I don't think I did that on purpose, but it's just kind of an interesting thing to point out. I really don't like that his gym bag is like a completely different palette. The only way that that would make sense is if you had established through story or whatever that he plays for this team or he's part of a thing or whatever, and that bag is from that. And then this outfit is what he had to change into or whatever, because then you at least have some connection. Now, that doesn't mean that people's gym bags match themselves, but when we're crafting a world like this, unless we're actually thoroughly establishing that kind of randomness like we have in real life, like these shoes from there, this bag from there, et cetera, et cetera, um, unless we're actually focusing on that and really illustrating that for the viewers, uh, this just feels really weird and out of place. In fact, it feels so specific because it's this red and white that it feels like we're trying to tell the viewer something. So what I would do is instead of making it like match his outfit, I would just make it something that goes like gets killed as far as importance goes. So it'd be like just black or brown, some sort of a neutral color. Uh, you could probably even go for something that's not necessarily a neutral color as long as it is just like all one color and it feels like it's insignificant. It could go white though. Um, so yeah, I would try to just de-emphasize that bag. Uh, and I mean, I was probably just feeling this pose for some reason back then, so I wouldn't even necessarily say that the bag is useful. I don't know that we're saying much other than he just came from the gym, he plays sports. I don't actually know what we're trying to do. That's kind of what I was talking about before, something that I do uh, and have always done is like I'll just draw like characters and sometimes create like a lineup and there's no ultimate purpose for it, but I just did. Okay. So let's now talk about the last bit of this. There's, there's one aspect more that I wanna talk about uh, and, then, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, clearly there's you know, anatomical things that we could talk about. Uh, so I'm not gonna really go into that. Uh, I definitely feel like that arm gets, gets a little short there. Um, this thumb is whack. So there's things like that that I think that we could go. We could even go, there's definitely some facial anatomy stuff here that I think is a problem. This eye should be pulled back, this nose, you know, something like that. This is a, a, also a really bad uh, rough, but you at least can get the idea. What happens if I turn that off? It's feeling a little more. Yeah, that feels a little bit more like a head. And then when you, if you were to kind of outline this just as it is. I think it starts feeling that ear is so small. I just want to turn that off. So it looks like okay. Um, I think that this has a little more depth to it and a little bit more proper anatomy happening. Um, but anyways, the anatomy in that head is part of the problem, but I think the bigger problem is actually the overall posing and what the character is doing like with us, uh, which is right now nothing. He's walking from somewhere, he's looking at something, or someone is calling his name or something, and we're not a part of this at all. And I think that when you're designing a character like this, or not designing a character, but just doing an illustration with a character in it, I think it's better to have like a purpose. So I think that what we should do is we should either have the character just engaging with us, looking directly at us, or doing something that at least feels a little bit more natural. I mean, this pose is kind of weird. This leg is barely in front of this one. So is he walking? I can't really tell. It kind of actually just looks like he's standing, but he's like really off balance. He looks like he could fall that way potentially. Um, he looks like somebody said his name, like, hey. And he just is kind of like, Bleh. like it's just, there's not much happening there. So there's things that we could do with either his uh, posing, we could have him little bit more exaggeratedly, like looking off to the side. 
I think that that feels a little bit better. It feels more like he's like actually, let's turn that off. He's actually looking this way. Somebody's saying it, he's going, somebody's saying his name. He's like, huh? Mm? And that feels a little bit nicer. Um, or we do the other thing I said, which is that we, we get him facing the camera and we get him connecting. Oof, what layer am I on? If we, well, he's not happy. I was about to do like these big happy eyes. So he's just like serious, Mr. Serious. He goes to serious high school and he's a serious guy. He's got a serious haircut too. It's not too long, it's not too short. So something like that, I think at least feels now like we're a part of it again. Oh man, though, this anatomy, I, I wanna like open this guy up so much because he's, he's just really tight. This pose is very, very tight. Um, I was clearly focused a lot on these little embellishments uh, and not so much on whether or not this, this whole pose even felt normal. Um, I guess uh, I said that was the last thing, but the only other thing I want to talk about is the embellishments again. For this type of a character, I think the embellishments are like kind of fine, but I would, even though I've got this uh, cross thing happening, which is a nice uh, repeating motif, I would probably eliminate this leather I could keep this because this is uh, something he's added, I guess. This leather that's peeking in here, I'd probably make like a slightly nicer belt to match the rest of them. Uh, I would either, I would, I would kill these leather straps, but I would replace them with something nice. I wouldn't get rid of them entirely. I think that it's obviously part of the vibe of the entire piece. Um, and then probably eliminate the aspects that are like, <laughs> these are screws. I just realized that. So these are like screws. I wouldn't make those screws. I just make them buttons. Um, I don't know where the hell this guy's from that he's like, yeah, I've got uh, Phillips screws in me and uh, instead of instead of buttons. Um, and so I would, I would try to find a way to make these more like stitched adornments or a buckle, something that actually looks usable instead of like they're just like riveted into his uh, vest. And same thing with uh, the screws, kill the screws. And then I think we're, we're getting somewhere. So I'm not gonna sit here and redraw this character because I think that it's, it's just not worth it to be honest. Um, but I wanted to try doing like a critique of something for everyone. And I wanted to do something that wasn't targeted at somebody um, else. I wanted to just target myself basically. And uh, hopefully this was useful in some way to try and talk about like when something's not going right in a design, like exactly why and how this illustration could be better. So just to summarize, I think we can summarize this pretty quickly. Um, I think it's this background, just kill it. I think it'd be better on a white background than this background. So just do something to simplify that. We're trying to accent this guy, not this crazy mess in the background. Uh, next, I would clean up the messaging. So what are we trying to say here? What are we trying to say there? What are we trying to say about these leather straps? And just try to make sure I'm actually telling a consistent story there. Having these embellishments like that, I think are good. Um, we just need to get the rest of the outfit under control so that we're telling the viewer what this guy's all about. Uh, that goes for the bag as well. We need to kill the bag or replace it with a nondescript bag. Uh, I actually, before I said I wouldn't make it match him, I, I'm gonna go further and say like definitely don't make it match him because then he's just gonna feel like he bought everything at the same store instead of it looking like a uniform. Uh, and then I would fix probably a lot of his posing, but I would fix how he's engaging with us. Is he engaging with us? Is he actually interacting with something that is uh, off screen? Uh, and just make that more clear. So I hope that was helpful. Um, I hope that that provided something interesting. I'll go ahead and post this. And uh, if you all dig it, then I'll do more like this. Uh, and then maybe as time goes on, if it becomes more of a thing, I'll critique other people's stuff as well, as long as they're willing to go through that. So um, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. And if you're looking for me on the internet, these are the places where you can find me.